This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com slash Babish. This one is a little bit of all of us. Everything that we all kind of know about each other. And I wouldn't know any if I didn't work at the beef. What's this one called? The Michael. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week, to close out the Bear Trilogy, we're taking a look at the savory cannoli. So let's start by getting the upsetting stuff out of the way, because first we have to make a meat smoothie. In order to make the filling, we're roughly chopping six ounces of mortadella, placing it in the jar of a high-powered blender, along with three and a half ounces of whole milk brought to a bare simmer. Then we're gonna blend this guy on high speed for about two minutes or until smooth. I think my face says it all. Next, in this method, courtesy of Joe Sasto, we're placing our meat goo in a small bowl and placing that small bowl bowl into a much larger bowl full of ice, rapidly chilling the mixture to room temperature whilst we whip our cream. For that, we're whipping two and a quarter ounces of cold, heavy cream to a whipped cream-like consistency, and then to combine the two, we're gently folding them together with a rubber spatula, quickly giving up on that and just using a whisk, and seasoning with an eighth teaspoon of white pepper, and a few spirited rasps of freshly grated nutmeg. And we're going to stick this in the fridge while we make our Parmesan cheese shell, which we're going to make by wrapping a cheese frico around a rod while it's still hot. To make the frico, we're baking 14 grams of freshly grated Parmesan at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for five to seven minutes. I'm using a ring mold to make sure that the cheese melts and spreads evenly. Then while still piping hot, we're wrapping it around a wooden dowel, gently removing after about 15 seconds once solidified. Now this looked pretty delicious, but also very full of holes. This sent me down a bit of a frico rabbit hole, as the old saying goes, trying different amounts of different cheeses to give it a more consistent structure. On a whim, I tried combining 60 grams of Parmesan cheese with three quarters of a teaspoon of cornstarch, hoping that this this would somehow give me a more cohesive crisp. I also wanted to make them smaller, so I moved down to seven grams of cheese per cheese circle, baking for a little bit longer, seven to eight minutes, and was surprised to see that it worked. The cornstarch helped prevent giant bubbles from forming in the cheese as it baked, resulting in fewer holes and a generally more unified cheese frico. So now we have our Parmesan shell. Next up, we have the mysterious oil that's drizzled on the plate by Chef Marcus. Might have just been olive oil, but this seemed like a good opportunity to introduce an oniony element. So in a medium saucepan, I'm combining one cup of room temperature olive oil with four thinly sliced shallots, gently bringing up to a bare bubble and low temperature frying for about 10 minutes until the shallots have reached a state of golden brownedness. Strain out the oil, drain the shallots on paper towels, and reserve for wherever else you might need crispy shallot goodness. Because all we're going to use in this recipe is the oil in this chef squeeze bottle, of course. Last but not least, it looked like the cannoli was perched atop a pile of tapenade. So in the jar of a food processor, I'm combining one cup of pitted black olives, three roughly chopped anchovy fillets, two two roughly chopped cloves of garlic, the juice of one half of one particularly juicy lemon, pinch of salt, few twists of freshly ground black pepper, and one and a half tablespoons of drained capers. Now we're gonna pulse this a whole bunch of times, scraping down the sides of the food processor once or twice until we have a consistently textured rough and pebbly tapenade. Empty out the food processor, give it a thorough cleaning, because next up we have a cup of dry roasted pistachios, which we're gonna finally process to make for some tip of the cannoli decoration. And with that, it's time to plate and serve. We're starting with a small mound of our black olive tapenade that's going to act as a sort of kickstand for our cannoli. I've got the mortadella cream in a piping bag, which I'm going to use to fill up the cannoli from both sides before dipping in the pistachios and perching atop the tapenade. I sure do like saying that. Gingerly top that with some salmon roe for a pop of color and briny oceanic flavor, and generously drizzle with shallot infused olive oil. And there you have it, the heart-wrenchingly named Michael, which would be a pretty convincing fake out for a real cannoli were it not for the fish eggs on top. Seems like a fork and knife restaurant, so I'm going to crack through the shell using a fork and knife, fix myself up a bite with a little bit of everything and dig in. And it's really, really delicious, but it's mostly mortadella cream, which is too much. Don't get me wrong, it's very, very tasty and inventive, and two out of two Kendall's and Nico's agree, it's worthy of the clean plate club. And maybe it's just because I liquefied the meat myself, but I think this needs a higher Parmesan shell to meat filling ratio. So I'm gonna make some teeny tiny four gram fricos, which I'm going to roll around the shaft of this severed arrow, something I often describe as a very, very normal kitchen tool to have. But since these guys 
eyes are so small, within 30 seconds I was having a hard time forming them. Luckily, a brief stint back in the oven softened things right up. Now, for plating, if we're shooting for a Michelin star, I think there's more room for ring molds. So I'm going to use one to form a perfect disc of tapenade to act as a platform for our nolis, which I'm filling, dipping, and stacking pyramid style along with the row and drizzle of infused oil. And there you have it, bite-sized savory cannoli, as seen from every possible angle. Let's see how these guys perform, and at this size, not only does it make for a lovely Ames bouche courtesy of the kitchen, but it's a much better ratio of cheese and crunch to meat and soft. After all, Michael did say that the small cans of tomato sauce tasted better. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.